Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today I want to talk about the responses that you provided to me when I asked you the question, what were the biggest mistakes? What were the biggest mistakes that you've made in keeping fish? I received a bunch of responses, both at the, uh, at the Facebook page, Ben O apostrophe Cichlid, the Facebook uh, fish keeping group page, and also at the YouTube community page. I did it as a survey, you folks responded. And in the, in the uh, wide range of responses, there were certain patterns that emerged and certain kinds of mistakes that seemed to be more major than other mistakes. And so I went ahead and tabulated some of those and I'm gonna go ahead and read back some of your comments and um, make some comments on your comments and uh, talk about the biggest mistakes in keeping fish. So uh, biggest mistakes that you've made in keeping fish. So let's go ahead and get into that now. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that bell and that sub button, all that good stuff. If you feel you're getting something of value that's helping you in your fish keeping, uh, definitely hit that bell and that uh, subscribe button. It tells YouTube that you like the content and encourages YouTube to recommend the channel to other fish keepers. Working hard on trying to get the channel over 40,000 subscribers, your help is appreciated. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this, uh, into this topic. And um, what I did is I conducted a survey and uh, you folks gave me a bunch of great responses. I'm not gonna be able to cover all of them as much as I'd like to, but I'll cover uh, a few of them that were included in the categories that were the most prevalent, uh, the most common mistakes that seem to be made uh, by most of you. And um, let's start off here with um, mistakes that were made in, in feeding in feeding fish, and this is something that came up. Let me drop this down here. Adam Moore, Adam Moore says, feeding too much, instead of watching the size of my fish, I just kept feeding the recommended amount. So um, that's a really good point. You know what, you were feeding your fish a year ago, if you're still having the same routine, but you've, um, you've added stock, you've removed stock, your fish have put on size. I mean, you really have to be on top of that. That's a real good point, Adam, to really stay on top of how much you're feeding, how often you're feeding, and uh, you know, making sure that you're dialing that in. Uh, Terry Spelling, Terry Spelling says the, uh, let me move her comment up here. Terry says, having a neighbor feed my fish while we was on vacation, very, very bad and risky idea. Please mark and separate feedings. Two years ago, it cost me my South American cichlid tank. My Jack Dempsey lived and I have since added many African cichlids. Hope you picked me. I did, Terry, I picked you. So um, this is a, uh, unfortunately, not an uncommon mistake and you're, you're advice is good. Me personally, I leave individual packets, individual small plastic packets with the date and the time on them. And uh, with various aquariums, I even put the, I even leave them with each aquarium. All right, so February 10th, AM feeding. February 10th, PM feeding. And so all they do is they open up the envelope and they drop it in. Uh, the fish always act hungry and uh, an unexperienced fish keeper will think that they're starving the fish. Healthy fish act hungry. I mean, these guys are, look at them. They were just fed. So healthy fish act hungry. So your neighbor trying to do the right thing will kill your fish. So, uh, <laughs> so fish feeding mistakes. 
Another category that came up was had to do with planning and, and preparing. And uh, Ralph said, ignoring the rule of a fish can fit in his mouth, he will eat it, lost a couple expensive fish when it could have been avoided. You know, that, that's one of those things where it's a, it's a hard lesson to learn. You bring a fish home that you really wanted, finally got a hold of one, he's pretty big, you put him in and you lose some fish. Uh, it's a helpless feeling to watch a fish that you loved in the mouth of another fish. Jerry Cook, impulse buying before doing any research. We've all made that mistake, Jerry, and um, you come home with a fish that isn't compatible with the fish you have, chaos breaks out, or maybe the fish that you bought needs different water parameters than the fish that you had, and then you have problems. Uh, Holly Gibbs buying Hannibal, a clownfish, and putting him in a tank with 40 neon tetras, Poof, dinner, uh, beginner mistake. But you had a very happy, uh, a very happy uh, now uh, clownfish, <laughs> eating like a king. So um, these are hard, hard lessons. Very hard lessons. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. This is Sean Hall. I can move it. Sean says, buying three pak paku for a five foot aquarium. I was new to paku and knew nothing about them. Three years later, I had a five foot tank with one paku because he killed everything else. Shop shouldn't sell fish like this unless you have adequate space to keep them. I get it, Sean. I totally get it. And that kind of mistake unfortunately happens too often. You see uh, people with small tanks buying Oscars, buying red tail, you know, red tail catfish, and um, in a few months they got a problem. And um, it's also it's also on the buyer too. I mean, you know that. I don't have to tell you. The buyer has to do their 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 research. They have to get in front of it, and uh, because inevitably. They will make a mistake. Desert fish, thinking I had enough tanks for breeding projects. 18 tanks, breeding stock equals 20 tanks for fry, one a fish. <laughs> Again, there you go, planning, doing a little research and realizing that, that if you're a good breeder, you're gonna end up with hundreds of fish. Uh, I had a fellow the other day comment uh, under a video about, uh, I think it was either Texas cichlids or convicts. I think it was convicts. Picked up some convicts and in a matter of, of months had hundreds of convicts. So, uh, and if they're coming in waves, you, know, you, you, you can't really just throw them all together because eventually you'll have some that are too big and they'll eat the little ones. So you, more tanks, more tanks, more tanks. I get it. I get it. Again, under the planning, mistakes related to poor planning, Texas fish room. Impulse buying a fish for a tank. I didn't have a setup and running. You know, I almost did that myself just recently. I, I had this large shipment coming in uh, from James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack. And if you saw the video on that, on uh, the opening the unboxing video I'll put uh, a, I'll put a link up here and uh, you can see I had to hurry up and, and get a a uh, quarantine tank put together and so yeah you 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 come across that unicorn fish that fish you've been looking for forever man I better grab him up here he is and all of a sudden on the way home you realize where is this fish gonna go <laughs> into the bathtub. All right, another planning error. Throwing good money after bad when just a little research could have avoided the whole ordeal. Uh, Mutt, we've all been there. We've all been there. And uh, 
I remember mixing uh, fish that shouldn't have been together when I first started with cichlids and uh, losing fish to aggression, having to rehome fish, give fish away. Uh, again, know before you go, do some research, watch some YouTube videos. You'll still make mistakes, but um, planning, planning. This is the category of planning. And the number one planning mistake here, let's see, was Steve S. Steve S. says, getting back into fish. Now I have four aquariums in the living room, two of which aren't even running yet, and one hostile wife. <laughs> Part of planning has to involve including your spouse uh, in where... <laughs> you know, for us, tanks are wonderful and they go everywhere. They go in kitchens, they go in bathrooms, they go in living rooms. But if your spouse is like mine, the decor and layout of the house is, uh, that's, that's her area and an area that she uh, loves doing and has set up the way she wants. And uh, all right, good luck to you, my friend. I had to negotiate. I had to paint some walls, move some furniture, and uh, maybe with a little negotiation, you can... Uh, you could get back into her good graces and get off the couch. So um, let's take a look here at uh, another category that came up were quarantine tank mistakes. And uh, Heath Wetzel, Heath Wetzel, am I pronouncing it right? Not having a QT tank and not have the meds I needed or really knowing common fish diseases and how to identify them. Uh, he, that cost me a lot of money in not identifying Colomeris once, wiped out about 50% of my stock and, um, and it was a quarantine tank problem. I moved fish out of quarantine too fast. So man, I feel you, I feel you on that one. And this, this, is, this category is quarantine tank mistakes And MP, MP says, no quarantine was a huge disaster when I was just a kid. Uh, we've all cheated at one point or another. I, I certainly have. Sometimes we get lucky and it works out okay. Uh, sometimes we pay the price. But uh, rule of thumb, have a tank set up, put new fish in it for a month. If they're looking good, move them over. If they get sick, treat them in the quarantine tank before you contaminate all your stock and possibly lose many, many dollars in fish. So uh, that's a lesson. That's a hard one. Another quarantine tank mistake. Not having a quarantine tank and meds for new fish. We all learn from our mistakes. That's the truth. I keep um, some General Cure. I keep some Metroplex, some Focus. I keep uh, some ick, ick attack, cordon ick attack. Um, I have several meds that I always have on hand. I like the um, Fritz Marison, the Fritz Marison, great antibiotic for bacterial infection. So there are certain meds I always try and keep on hand, Steve. And uh, sometimes you have to treat them in the quarantine tank. That's a lot better place than trying to treat them in the main tank when you've, when you've uh, infected all of your fish. So we have another category called equipment mistakes. Equipment mistakes. And uh, cichlid insanity. Cichlid insanity, biggest mistake I made when absolutely new to fish keeping was I vacuumed my substrate, cleaned my filter, and I mean cleaned and cleaned inside of glass all the same day. Well, I get it. Uh, <laughs> killed off all your beneficial bacteria, which was followed by an ammonia, an ammonia spike, which is very hard on fish. Uh, often the fish simply don't survive it. And um, 
That's a hard one. That's a hard one to learn, and a lot of people do learn that way. Uh, when you clean, clean things on a rotation, do your filters, you know, rinse your media in tank water, then do your substrate maybe a couple weeks later. If you have a couple filters, do the second filter a couple weeks later. Do rotations, and, uh, and that way you can avoid what cichlid insanity had to go through. Let's see here, another one. Nix Aquatics, doing maintenance on my FX4 and then forgetting to tighten one of the lid screws led to a slow drip, which then caused my 125 gallon Aquion stand, which is made out of OSB, which I guess is that, that, that synthetic push to, or, uh, uh, it's like a fiber that's pressed to get wet and swell in multiple areas around the stand. I lost multiple hours of sleep worrying that I may have 125 gallons of water on my living room floor along with my frontosa colony. I hear you, Nick. That would be scary. Watching your stand swell up and wonder if that's a weak spot that's going to give and your tank's going to come falling over. I'd be curious to hear how that was resolved if you ended up replacing the stand. But, uh, yeah, there you go. And, uh, you know, just a rule of thumb, after you finish doing maintenance on a canister, uh, get a good high-powered flashlight and do an inspection. Do an inspection of all the connections. And uh, if there's a drip, you'll see it with a good flashlight and you can take action. I've had the slow drip. I had it in the uh, purge valve of an FX6, and fortunately I caught it early. I had a little puddle already. It would have, uh, of course, damaged the wood, and, uh, but I was able to catch it. All right. We have one from Greg McPherson. Greg Mc McPherson says... You move that comment. Greg says, made a DIY canister filter with a bucket that didn't have a screw on lid, took seven power outages and seven floods in the house before I threw it out and bought a canister filter. Sometimes DIY projects do not save you money. <laughs> Seven power outages. And I'm just glad you didn't get electrocuted, my friend. So um, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. For those of you watching this video and listening to these comments, you probably don't feel so bad right now about mistakes that you've made, right? <laughs> or maybe you're thinking, boy, I'm not alone. John Fox, washing filter out with tap water, scrubbing it clean, baby. <laughs> I know what you mean, John. You killed everything, and uh, you probably had some fish that were looking really stressed, if not dead, after the cleaning. A very common mistake, especially with new fish keepers. I wish that all the big, big box stores, and even your small mom and pop stores, would always ask, is this the first time you're taking fish home? And please, when you make, do make, you know, or maybe give them some, some flyer or a link to a video that lets them know about cycling a tank, beneficial bacteria, and things like that. Don't just fill it up with water, throw some dechlorinator and throw the fish in, and then be surprised when they start dying. I think that lack of that knowledge has killed off so many new fish keepers and really hurts the hobby. All right, we're winding down here. Equipment mistake uh, number two here, two from the top, Jason Seaman, leaving my FX6 on the windowsill unattended with my three-year-old in the room to knock it off. So I think we have two, two issues here. It looks like a three-year-old knocked an FX6 off of a windowsill. Now, I hope it didn't fall on the three-year-old because that's a big can 
and if it fell on your kid, could really hurt him, uh, would certainly uh, be hard on, let's say, the skull or something like that, be getting hit with something heavy like that. And I think we also have number two, so we got two for one here, plugging in an FX6 without the outlet on, or the outlet not in the tank. And so what you were doing basically is you were, you were, you were power, you were, you were power emptying your aquarium, using the motor of the FX6 to empty your aquarium down to the level of the input. So you had a lot of water everywhere real fast. And it doesn't matter how fast you get to that. It's like when a siphon hose falls out of the bucket, no matter how fast you get to it, you have a lot of water everywhere. It's amazing how that happens. But, um, you know, uh, we got to really take our time, really take our time when we do stuff like that and really double and triple check, you know, like the old woodworker, you know, uh, measure twice, cut once, double and triple check everything. All right, we're good to go and plug in. Don't do it while you're distracted. Don't do it when you're tired. Don't do it when you've been drinking. Uh, you know, take your time and do it right. My, oh my. Now the top category, the top in this category of mistakes was Ant Warrington. Ant Warrington. Ant Warrington says forgetting to put my stop valves back on my FX6 and plug it back in. Worst thing is I've done this twice and George Fernandez did this as well. So again, taking your time, taking your time and really double checking everything before you plug anything back in. And um, it is amazing how strong an FX6 motor is and how fast it will move an enormous quantity of water all over the floor. So uh, that's a bad one. Now the top category, the number one category for mistakes, believe it or not, and this might explain why my water change disasters video, water change disasters, I'll, I'll put a link up here. You can see water change disasters. Uh, that is, the, it's like been my, my, my biggest trending video for the last year. And water change mistakes was the top mistake. And um, John Wallace, who was honest with us and admitted to skipping weekly water changes, you can probably get away for a week or two. But if you go too long, you're going to have a... Uh, a lack of minerals that are normally replaced with water changes. You're going to have a uh, spike in nitrates. And uh, it's very stressful on the fish. Not good. Jack Adair. Am I pronouncing it right, Jack? Jack Adair. Back during my newbie stage, I killed most of a 29-gallon community by forgetting to dechlorinate after a water change on top of taking the filter to the sink and cleaning it. So you had a bit of a double whammy there, which no doubt put the fish under a tremendous amount of stress. I, uh, I, I fill my tanks right from the tap and I add the water conditioner as the tanks are filling up. I've never had a problem doing it that way. And Timbo's Tanks, let me move your comment, Timbo's, to right here. Timbo's Tanks, getting distracted and walking away from a water change refill. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. I, I, uh, I think that's listed in that water change disasters. You get distracted, maybe you're texting, uh, maybe you're in a conversation with somebody, maybe you get onto a phone call. Uh, maybe you get onto something on work, who knows? You come back and your 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 room is flooded. Not good, not good. Unfortunately, not uncommon.
macho, macho cichlids. One time I did a large water change without temperature checking the water and lost a bit of my stock. That can be a shock to your fish. If, you, if there's one thing fish keepers do, all of us, is we float fish to match temperature. That's one consistent thing done throughout the hobby. So temperature is important. And uh, if you shock them, now sometimes I have had, I've heard of people that intentionally will put in a colder water because it will, it will trigger breeding. I've heard that before. And so maybe the fish do have a tolerance for a certain amount of variation. Certainly in your larger tanks, you have uh, more wiggle room. If you're doing a 20, if you're adding 10, 20% of water to a 300 gallon tank and your temperature is off, that's gonna have less of an impact than a 60% water change on a 29 gallon with a different temperature, you're gonna shock that tank. So uh, what I do is I temperature match, I have a thermal, to, uh, a, a digital thermometer, I temperature match the tap water then I start the flow. Now, if it's a large water change, halfway through the flow, I will, I will check the temperature. Maybe the water heater kicked in, maybe someone is running the dishwasher or maybe someone in the house started a load of laundry and the temperature is now the water's, you know, hot water is being pulled elsewhere. So you can have a temperature change or shift during the fill-up. So, um, I'll do a temperature change right in the middle of the water change. So let's see here. Jacob McGrew did a 70% water change and thought my algae clear was aqua safe. Killed seven, killed seven cichlids. That's not good. You know, I wish some of these companies, like if you look at the Seacam safe and you look at Seacam, uh, Malawi uh, cichlid salt, those containers look identical, identical. So if you're a little off, if you're a little off on your game, you'll add some salt thinking you're adding safe and you'll, your fish will, you'll, you'll kill your fish because you'll add a high level of chlorine, especially with a large water change. So uh, what I did is I, I, I mark the lid with a permanent marker. It says safe in big letters, right? So there's, there's very little chance of mistaking the two in case I'm a little tired doing a change. You see that? So, um, so if I'm a little groggy doing my water change, I'm not going to go ahead and put the Malawi salt thinking I'm doing a, a, you know, thinking I'm conditioning the water. So that's not an uncommon mistake. And it is, uh, it can be devastating actually, depending on how heavily they chlorinate in your area. Uh, John, our friend, John uh, Domokos, half man, half cichlid on YouTube, forgetting to add dechlorinator during a 60% water change. Same thing, same thing. I mean, um, people space out, they forget, they get distracted, they, they think they did, and then later they go, you know what? And I've had that happen. I go, did I add it? Especially if you have a lot of tanks, you can forget. I mean, did I add it? Did I not add it? Because I did this bank of tanks, and I did this bank of tanks. and So, you know what? You can't really overdose with dechlorinator. If you're, if, if you're not sure, hit it again. You're not going to kill your fish. You can, you can really, um, and I've heard this from people who discovered that their, that their water district did a massive chlor you know, addition of chlorine or chloramine because of a recent storm or something. So they got a real heavy dose of chlorine or whatever. Hit the tank again. Give it a double dose. Give it a triple dose. I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll uh, hurt things. And it will not impact your beneficial bacteria. I checked with Seachem one time. I wrote to him. I said, look, does this impact beneficial bacteria? And they said, no, it doesn't. <clears throat> so those were the top, the top mistakes, the top mistakes that turn, uh, turned up. And uh, 
the top responses in the mistakes that you responded to with your survey uh, responses. I thank everybody who participated. If I didn't show your, your comment, I'm sorry I couldn't use all of them. As it is, this video is already pretty long. And uh, thank you, everybody that participated. You are appreciated. Be sure to, um, be sure to hit that, uh, that sub button if you can. If you're new and you haven't already, be sure to hit the, uh, the sub and all that good stuff so YouTube knows you are getting something out of the channel. And uh, I think that's it for me. I hope to see you on Saturday at 10 a.m. Central for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream where we can talk about these comments and a lot of other good stuff with a great group of fish keepers, all right? Thank you so much for tuning in, my friends. You are appreciated. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.